This is the new TT Artisan 27mm f2.8 autofocus lens. It's small, lightweight and it costs only $150. But is it actually any good? What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name is Elias, I'm a photographer located in Athens, Greece and in today's video we're going to take a look at the new TT Artisan 27mm f2.8 autofocus lens. This just got released for the Nikon Z mount and for the Sony E mount. It was previously released for the Fujifilm X system as well. So TT Artisan sent me this lens for testing and it actually came right on time because I actually left Athens for a few days for a trip and I shot everything on that small little lens in order to test it out and see how it performs on multiple scenarios. So in this video we're going to take a look at the build quality, at the image quality, and we're going to take a look at a few video samples. We're going to also talk about the autofocus system and lastly we're going to talk about who this lens is actually for. I will leave on the description down below a few timestamps so if you want to skip something uh, you can jump right onto the part that is important for you but I don't want to waste any more of your time so let's jump right into it. So about the build quality, um, this is actually the lens that we're getting over here uh, when we receive the box. Uh, the lens is pretty small, this over here is the lens cap that protects the bottom of the lens and on the front we have that really thin small plastic um, lens cap over here that protects the front element. You can see that the front element is really really small. It comes only at 39 millimeters so you want to use really small filters on that lens over here. The lens itself is made pretty much out of plastic except from the back over here which is made out of some kind of metal. What we basically get is a lens which weighs only 93 grams which is amazing to be honest because if I pair it with my Nikon ZFC I get a combo which is less than half of a kilogram or a little bit over a pound which is really lightweight and it's crazy that we can get a nice little prime lens paired with a really strong and lightweight body like the Nikon GFC and basically have a kit which is ready to go. On the front we have a really small and smooth at the same time uh, focus ring. It's really responsive to be honest and over here on the bottom we have a nice clickable aperture ring. This is the sound that you get. The aperture ring is also made out of plastic so the sound that you're getting is not something that screams high quality to be honest. Let's say if I use the aperture ring from the TT Artisan 50mm f1.2 we get a really different uh, aperture sound. Oh nice. But at the end of the day it's really nice to have a few uh, clicks on the aperture ring and that's always a bonus. I'm not trying to complain over here. It's just something that I noticed. The lens also comes with this small little hood over here which goes on the front of the lens. To be honest, I don't really use it that much because it adds a little bit of size on the lens and that's just about enough in order to make this lens not fit on my uh, pocket of my jacket. So yeah, that's unfortunate, but it's really nice. It's a metal one. In case you want to use a hood, the lens comes with one and yeah, it's a really sturdy one, a really small one because again, they don't want to make the size of this lens any bigger. And I think one of the pros of this lens is that it actually makes you to leave your camera bag back home and only have to carry with you one body and this little small lens in order to basically not have to worry about switching lenses, um, carrying a large bag on your back and stuff like that. Lastly, the cap which protects the back of the lens over here has also a small USB-C uh, input over here which means that we are going to get a few firmware updates um, on this lens and this is the way that you're going to get the firmware update if you're going to get this lens as well. This really shows that they care about the products that they produce and yeah it's always nice to see that a company cares about their items and also about the customer as well. All right, let's now talk about the all important image quality. And like I said earlier, I took this lens out on a trip on some really beautiful and relaxing places here in Greece. The plan was to use this small lens in order to shoot everything and not have to carry around with me a huge bag and worry about what gear to use because I just want to have a clear mind and focus on the trip and the memories that I was making and also produce some nice clean photography 
by only using this little bad boy over here. So let's start talking about the sharpness that this lens produces. This lens is reasonably sharp even at f2.8. You can see here that if we zoom in in some of these images there's plenty of resolution to be seen and plenty of detail as well. Obviously the more you step down this lens the more sharper it gets and I feel like we get the best image quality at f8. At f11 I feel like we are starting to get a little bit of diffraction on this lens so it slightly becomes softer. So if you want to get the best resolution possible, shoot between f5.6 and f8. And I will also leave down below a Google Drive link so you can download some of the images and see for yourself if this lens is actually something that uh, satisfies you optically. And yeah, you can check it down on the description below. Personally, I can see this lens to be used like an everyday carry in order for someone to document their everyday life, the streets they are walking, the places they are visiting, the memories that they are making and also later on to post them on social media or simply create a nice little photo book with some of these memories that someone is capturing by using this lens and for that purpose the sharpness and the optical formula is more than enough at least in my opinion. Let me know down below if you agree with me on that one or not. But at the end of the day, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. The first negative that I found pretty quickly while using this lens is that at f2.8 we get some really really heavy vignetting on the corners of the image. You can see here there's a sample at f2.8 and a sample at f8 and even at f8 the corners are still a little bit dark. Some people might like that, some people might not like that. Sometimes it's actually a plus because I like using a little bit of vignette on the images, maybe sometimes not so much, but yeah, you get the point. At f2.8, we have some really, really harsh vignette. This lens is also not meant to be used for macro photography. You can get as close as 35 millimeters from your subjects. Judging from these photographs, we can get reasonably good resolution even shooting close up. And since we are talking about close up image quality, let's also take a look about this lens bokeh. And basically, you can see that when we are shooting close up on those small subjects, we get that really nice swirly bokeh. This is a really beautiful and rare characteristic, and I really like. The effect that we're getting especially on this photograph over here with the purple flower the water and the rocks i pretty much love this really look that we get in this image i think this has something to do with the seven diaphragm blades that this lens has in it and also with the fact that it is a 27 millimeter this is something that really surprised me and i think it adds a little bit of character on the pictures of this lens but in order to create this effect you really have to get close to your subjects so don't expect to take full body shots or even half body portraits and get background blur. You can see here on some of these portraits that the background is really noticeable so if you want to get background blur on your portraits then this lens is definitely not for you. I see this lens more like a travel lens, more like an environmental portrait lens because at 27mm and at f2.8 on a crop sensor camera it's not possible to get really nice cream bouquet on full body portrait shots and stuff like that. So if you want creamy backgrounds on your full body or even half body portraits, um, yeah, this lens is not for you, obviously. The chromatic aberration on this lens is also really well controlled, to be honest. You can see that most of my shots were during the harsh sunlight that we get here in Greece. I didn't really notice that purple fringing or any other chromatic aberration. This was a really pleasant surprise, not to say that there wasn't any but with the click of a button on Lightroom, I basically could clean up my image and yeah, it was basically ready to go. So yeah, the control of the chromatic aberration is something really, really welcoming on this lens. I also know that some people want to see about the samplers that this lens is producing and I took a few shots towards the sun in order to see what effect it creates and this is basically the effect that we get when we're shooting towards the sun. It's quite controllable but it also has a weird shape let's say here. The good thing is that it's obviously not affecting the whole image frame like some of these harsh and artistic uh, samplers. You can be the judge if you like this type of samplers or not. So let me know down below in the comments if you actually like the effect that it's creating. Personally, I don't really mind about samplers, especially on a lens like that. Yeah. I don't really mind at all. Lastly, let's also talk about the low light capabilities that this lens is providing us with. So basically at f2.8 it's a reasonably fast lens, it's way better than your kit lens and my kit lens because it lets in way more light than a regular zoom lens but at the same time we have to understand that other fast primes which come at an aperture like f1.4 and f1.8 will obviously perform way better at 
low light and produce cleaner images but at that size the fact that we get an f 2.8 prime is more than enough for me so basically it's up to you to decide if you want to carry around a large and heavy prime lens in order to get the best image quality possible or if you want to trade a little bit of that weight and size in and grab yourself a smaller prime lens like this one and obviously still use it during dark time but at the end of the day you have to raise your ISO a little bit higher this is a decision that you have to make personally I like having faster primes but I also like having smaller primes for the days that I want to get a little bit more casual once again I will link down below a Google Drive link on the description so you can download a few of the images that this lens produced for me and judge for yourself if the image quality is acceptable and I think that at the end of the day you're going to really be surprised um, about the image quality that this little bad boy over here produces so a big bonus and the large selling point of this lens is that basically even at that small of a size and small of a price we get autofocus with this lens so during the daylight the autofocus is pretty fast and mostly accurate but if you're doing large distance focus pulling then the autofocus motor will obviously hunt a little bit but this is normal to be honest and it's also really responsive with the eye autofocus um, in order to track faces and eyes for portraits and stuff like that so that's also a really nice extra during the nighttime the autofocus is still really responsive i only had some issues when i tried to use eye autofocus during the nighttime but to be honest that's something to be expected uh, most lenses during nighttime while using eye autofocus don't really respond on the best way possible the only issue that i have with the autofocus of this lens is that basically in some scenarios when the autofocus motors try to focus they make a sound and most of the time if you're using the microphone of your camera then it's going to pick up a little bit of that focus noise what i have to say is if you're using this lens for video and you want to capture a little bit of sound then definitely use an external microphone the one that i'm using right now over here so yeah that's the only negative thing that i have to add about the autofocus system on this lens some of you might also want to use this lens for video so in that case I captured a few clips here and there and yeah you can enjoy them and judge for yourself if the image quality and the video quality that this lens produces is something that you like or not like a small disclaimer I'm really sorry for the dust particles that my sensor has gathered so please try to be nice <laughs> and try to imagine that they're not really there again when I get back in Athens I really have to clean my sensor. So after all the points that I made during this video, I think it's time to try to explain who this lens is actually for. I think in my opinion, this lens is perfect for someone that wants to do street photography, drug photography, or basically document their everyday life without having to carry around their camera bag or more lenses. It's basically for someone that wants to pick up a lightweight camera, put this lens on the front and yeah, leave the home without having to worry about anything else. Personally, I felt really great that I didn't have to carry around with me my large camera bag or any more lenses on my trip I was always locked in and I was always enjoying the memories that I was making so at the end of the day if you want to get that same feeling like me and you only want to spend about $150 then yeah this lens is the perfect one for you so this is where I'm going to end the video thank you so much for spending some of your valuable time by watching my content this really means the world to me if you're new here consider subscribing and maybe liking the video this really helps out with the algorithm you might notice that I'm on a different uh, studio, it's not actually a studio because yeah, I'm on a bedroom on my girlfriend's house. Anyways, I don't want to waste any more of your time. See you next time, take care, peace. <laughs>